ready for some hot weather this weekend. Take a look at those highs. We're going to be in the mid to even upper 90s with some very low chances of rain. Coming up, I'll have a look at your future cast and exactly what you can expect. Now on Good Morning Augusta, as COVID-19 cases increase in the area, we hear from parents about how it's impacting local schools. Details as your number one source for local weekend morning news starts right now. Live from Television Park, this is Good Morning. Shine, thank you for joining us. It's great to see you. I'm Sean Cabbage Dog. We'll get to your news of the day in just a few seconds. But first, let's head over to the Weather Center. Meteorologist Jenna Petracci is standing by with a check of our forecast. Hey, Jenna. Good morning, Sean. Starting out with some cloudy skies this morning. Here's a look at our Jiffy Loop Skyview Network cam at the Augusta Regional. Notice those skies are starting to clear, though, in some spots. So around the CSRA, mix of clear skies, a few foggy conditions as well, mostly in the low to mid-70s, 75 in Sylvania, 73 in Millen, 73 in Thompson as well, only 70 in Saluda, and notice all those foggy conditions in Gibson, Crawfordville, and Sparta as well. So looking at satellite and radar, you can see some of those clouds passing by through parts of our area and across the two-state view. We do have high pressure generally in the region with just a few showers happening along the coast of southern Georgia. So for your morning show forecast, you can expect these partly cloudy skies to continue. A, a few more um, areas of fog will continue over the next hour or so, and temperatures will begin to rise into the 80s by around 10 a.m. once again with those partly cloudy skies. Now looking at the big picture of what's happening, notice pretty calm conditions in our area, but we have a whole lot to talk about when it comes to the tropics. We have Hurricane Ida that is strengthening as it moves towards the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi, causing a hurricane warning to go in effect and a whole bunch of different advisories, watches, and warnings as well. So I'll have more details on our future cast here and a look at the tropics coming up. All right, Jenna, thank you. Saturday was game night for students across. All right, Jenna, thank you. Saturday was game night for students across the CSRA. And while most students enjoyed the Friday night lights, there were mixed reactions from parents about the rise in COVID cases at Columbia County Schools. Our Ashley Jones has details. I think it's irresponsible. Shakisha Bailey has two kids in Columbia County Schools. One has already tested positive for COVID-19. At school, they're supposed to be safe, and they're supposed to be taken care of like they're taking care of at home, and they're not. Just last week, Columbia County reported 405 COVID cases among students, while Wishman County reported 159. Friday evening, that number had jumped to 506 cases in Columbia County, 172 in Richmond County. But our leadership, they're not thinking about our kids. I feel like they're thinking, of money and not about our kids. But Bailey doesn't just point to the school system for the rise in cases, but also other students. Of course, all the schools cannot require the kids to be six feet apart or anything like that, so it's, it sucks. They're missing out on social time because everybody's not practicing the same day. Everybody's kids aren't doing the same thing that we're doing. Just this past week, Columbia County school leaders implemented a mask mandate. Richmond County started the school year with that mandate, but there are concerns about how faculty and staff are enforcing it. News Channel 6 obtained this statement today from Columbia County school leaders about how they plan to enforce that policy. It reads in part, students will take frequent mask breaks throughout the day, including any time spent outdoors and during lunch. Students who are unable to wear a face covering will be socially distanced as much as possible and will have to quarantine out of school if they come into contact with someone who tests positive. While parents no doubt have concerns about the rising numbers, some say it's to be expected. I think the schools are doing everything they can. Adam Guest has a son at Evans High School. Most of the studies that I've read show that, you know, masks are, I mean, unless you have the N95 mask, it's, it's not helping a whole lot. He says there's not enough knowledge about the virus to fight it effectively. It's because many more people have been vaccinated uh, are getting sick and infected with the Delta variant. So um, uh, I, think, I think we'll have to take a wait-and-see approach. And Augusta, Ashley Jones, WJBF News Channel 6. COVID-19 pediatric cases are spiking in Georgia. They are up in all age groups, especially 10 to 17-year-olds. Some 1,200 cases were reported daily among that group this week. Doctors say the Delta variant is making them very sick.
it is absolutely untrue that young, healthy people cannot become critically ill with this. And in fact, we've had several in our facility become so critically ill that not only did they go on the ventilator, but ended up on heart lung bypass machines in order to provide them oxygenation. Experts say if more adults get vaccinated, it will reduce the risk of kids getting infected. Coronavirus cases are increasing in Aiken County. In January, there were 34 COVID-related deaths. Those numbers were down by May to July, but so far in August, 21 people have died after they battled the virus, and that number is expected to rise. One local funeral home owner tells me he's seeing a big demand for his services. Our caseload increased significantly. You know, the demand uh, from the hospitals and, you know, us retrieving and bringing loved ones into our care increased. Uh, you know, we were at capacity. Meanwhile, the coroner says his office is investigating another suspected COVID-related death yesterday, but no official conclusion has been made yet. Some South Carolina business owners want to require their employees to get vaccinated. Labor attorneys in the state say with Pfizer getting FDA approval, they expect more businesses announcing requirements. They told the State Chamber of Commerce this week that a vaccination mandate has pros and cons. It could make employees and others feel more safe at work, but it could also lead to protest or some employees leaving their jobs. You're going to get pushback. And some of the pushback is going to be legitimate, honest questions. And some of the pushback is going to be, uh, you know, things that are, that, that are easily disproven and even comically absurd in some situations. 40% of eligible South Carolinians are fully vaccinated, and that's according to the state health department. New this morning, a bicyclist is dead following a crash in Aiken. The incident happened on Powderhouse Road on August 16th. Troopers say the driver of a Tahoe and the cyclist were traveling east on Powderhouse Road. The victim made a left turn in front of the SUV and was struck. That person later died late last night at Augusta University. We are working to learn the identity of the victim. Richmond County investigators are searching for a suspect in the shooting Thursday. They say Brandon Trey Bland is wanted for two counts of aggravated assault. He may be driving a gold Chevy Malibu with black rims or a black Nissan Altima. That shooting happened at the raceway at Stevens Creek and Washington Roads. They say Bland shot at another person in a vehicle. A woman at the BP station across the street was hit by a stray bullet. Investigators say Bland is considered armed and dangerous. If you know where he may be, contact 911. Murder charges after a deadly shooting in North Augusta Friday. Police say Dylan Thorsonson called 911 to report the shooting. He says the man who was shot was an intruder in the home on Thurman Street, but investigators say his story didn't add up with the stories of others in the home, and he was charged with murder. The identity of that victim has not been released either. Friday, some Augusta commissioners got a first look. Them before they're gone. Milton Ruben Chevy. <laughs> a middle school in Columbia County is showing its support for a teacher battling cancer. Our Kim Vickers shows us how. Brett Cooper is a math teacher, head football coach, and baseball coach at Stallings Island Middle School who is fighting a form of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. He's missing the first semester of the school year for treatment, and his colleagues say he's missed. We definitely feel his absence here and, and miss Brett daily. Brett Cooper was diagnosed with cancer in April and has been undergoing treatment ever since. To honor him, the school dedicated its annual Relay for Life campaign to him. Casey Hackathorne, a friend and colleague, helped design a special rock star inspired t-shirt to sell for the fundraiser. I guess just, I know Brett's love of music and it's, you know, he, he teaches with a guitar in his hand sometimes. That's how he teaches math, which is super unique. I know he's involved in a band with his church and always going to concerts, always talking about music. Teresa Davis, another colleague, says that Cooper's positive attitude and energy is inspiring. I've never seen him, you know, negative about anything, and so just that has generated such a positive impact on the faculty and the students. Hackathorne agrees. But Brett just has a, a unique energy. Um, uh, I've said this to other people, just such a, if there was anybody to defeat something, it's Brett Cooper because he's, 
More positive than the rest of us put together. Cooper says he has his good days and his bad days, but he always turns to things he loves to lift his spirits. Well, music is one of them. Uh, play some music, you know, listen to some music, sing really loud, whether, you know, my family wants me to or not. You know, 80s music. I love 80s music. I love 90s country. So a lot of those uh, are definitely one of the ways to do it. Cooper says that he's been overwhelmed by the support he has received. It's just, it's, it's, that's probably what, what has helped me be very positive with my attitude is just knowing that I have a family that cares about me, you know, at home, and that I also have a family that cares about me at work. Anyone interested in buying a t-shirt to support the school's Relay for Life campaign can find that link on our website, WJBF.com. Kim Vickers, WJBF, News Channel 6. All right, and Jenna is up next with your forecast in less than three minutes. WDBF.com is coverage you can count on. Welcome to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. We have sectionals starting at $5.99, and we offer financing and delivery to meet your needs. For the top brands at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. George Sink fought for us. Oh, yeah. The two for $6 double checker burger with cheese deal. Free delivery fee on your favorite delivery app. Flyburgers Outlet, quality furniture at the best prices ever. Our huge Labor Day sale is going on now through Labor Day Monday. Everything's on sale, bedroom, dining room, living room, even mattresses. Shop often, inventory changes daily. But don't wait, these deals won't last forever. Get the best prices on furniture and accessories this Labor Day. In stock and ready for delivery. Can you save at Weinberger's Outlet during our Labor Day sale? Yes, yes you, you can. can. Daily non-stop. Fly there, fly home. Welcome to Davis Appliance and Furniture, where you can find the best deals in town. We have sofa and love seat sets starting at $5.99, and we offer financing and delivery to meet your needs. For the top brands at the lowest prices in town, visit us at Davis Appliance and Furniture. Now, your most accurate forecast with WGBF Live Viper City. Good morning. It's a very nice start to this weekend. Notice, it, notice a beautiful sunrise on our Jiffy Loop Skyview Network cam at the Augusta Marriott. Well, actually, I should step over here so you can actually see it. Beautiful skies this morning. Just a few clouds out there, and temperatures are around the average for this time of the year, 73 degrees here in Augusta. And around the area, temperatures are all in the low 70s for the most part. Once again, with the mix of some clear skies and some clouds and also some foggy conditions still in Thompson and Louisville. Now moving on to the satellite and radar, notice just some of those clouds passing by the area and across the two-state view, not a lot of rain happening, just a few showers in northern Georgia and along the coast there of southern Georgia, but overall high pressure is keeping us fairly nice for this weekend. For your pool day forecast, it'll be a great day to head out, but remember to keep your sunscreen with you and stay hydrated because it will be very hot, 93 degrees by 5 p.m. And the feels like meter for this week will be staying well into the triple digits and notice the actual air temperature also very high we're going to be in the mid 90s all the way through tuesday and it's going to be feeling anywhere from around 100 to 103 degrees and when it comes to rain chances they're staying pretty low all the way through monday zero percent on sunday and just an isolated shower or two possible today and monday but notice those rain chances go up tuesday and go up to 50 percent on wednesday as we have to keep a close eye on the tropics now we have a very active atlanta Atlantic Basin, but we're going to focus on Hurricane Ida. This is a Category 1 hurricane at this time, but we do have a tropical depression that formed just o over a couple hours ago, but that one is still far out from the United States, but we definitely have to talk about Ida because this could potentially be a very devastating hurricane to the coast of Louisiana and Mississippi. So looking at the current stats on Ida, 80 mile per hour wind speeds is expected to strengthen to a Category 2 by later this afternoon. Afternoon. So here's a look at the track for Ida, and notice it is still expected to be a major hurricane at landfall, possibly a Category 4 with 140 mile per hour wind speeds. Notice as it moves to the northeast, that's when we'll have to keep a close eye on it as we'll start to see some of those outer rain bands from the storm. But moving back to what's going to be happening in Louisiana, notice the storm surge being very high, over 9 feet in some areas of the southern Louisiana coast. 
National Hurricane Center is actually expecting around 10 to 15 feet uh, of storm surge for the worst case scenario if this storm does continue to strengthen. Now back to your future cast for here though for today. Notice just, just a few of those isolated showers passing through the area, mostly just partly cloudy skies. And we'll be done with any of those showers by this after the, or this late afternoon. And for tomorrow, it's starting out with mostly cloudy skies, but then we'll be clearing out. It'll be a very nice clear day and we'll definitely be heating up. For your future cast from Monday through Wednesday, there's the hurricane that'll then become a tropical storm. And as I mentioned, as we move into later next week, that's when we'll start to see some rain from that storm Tuesday through Thursday. For your highs today, 94 in Augusta, mid-90s across the area, and 72 tonight in Augusta with partly cloudy skies. And for the next 10 days, rain chances are staying low through Monday. And as I mentioned, we'll be watching Hurricane Ida. That'll bring us some rain Tuesday through Thursday. Ashley Home Store's Labor Day